Hey guys, and welcome to today's idiot video. Today we are going to be covering a video posted by YouTube user Lieber, who believes that the flight paths that airplanes take prove that the Earth is not a globe, but that it's flat. The problem with this argument, and we will cover this in detail in the video, is that flat Earth idiots never analyze the flight paths as if they are flying across a three-dimensional sphere. So to a flat earther, it will always appear as if the flights take a path that is less direct and flat earthers will use this misinformation as proof that the earth is not a globe. But Lieber, as well as all dishonest flat earthers, is a fucking idiot. Now I want to say a personal thank you to all of my patrons and channel members whose support helps me to continue to make videos like these debunking stupidity. So let's begin. So this is a video that proves two things. First of all, that the earth is flat and there's no curvature and everybody knows that. And secondly, that all the maps that we have officially are fake and an insult to human intelligence. No, Lieber, not all of us know that the earth is flat with no curvature. Just a handful of idiots whose parents thought it would be funny to feed them discount lead-based baby formula until they were 12 years old. And as far as the maps being an insult to human intelligence, I would say that the real insult to human intelligence are you inbred monkeys who blindly deny science and still think the earth is flat. And this is going to be proven by the air flights and air pads and flights of airplanes in the world using Flight Radar 24 Live Air Traffic, which is a public website that anybody with a computer and internet connection can go there and see in real time all the flights in the whole world using the Mercator map, which is the official map. Without ruining the entire video, because this will be a common theme in his rhetoric, Lieber, like most flat earthers, doesn't realize the problem with using a two-dimensional projection to model a three-dimensional world. The Mercator projection is a graphical representation of the globe Earth on a two-dimensional rectangular plane, and it's also known as a cylindrical map projection. The main problem with this map is that it makes all lines of longitude equidistant from each other at all times, which is impossible on a three-dimensional sphere that has lines of longitude that diverge away from each other from one pole until they cross the equator where they begin to converge again on their way to the other pole. For instance, on the Mercator map, the north and south poles are not points as they are in reality. They are lines that are as long as the equator. You can see it in real time, you can see the landed flights, you can see all the details, the registration numbers, the airport of origin, destination, and the trajectory, the flight path. Also, uh, this page uh, is, I'm, I'm also going to use this data, which is scientific data, with the 1892 equidistant azimuthal uh, flat earth map of Gleason, which is not perfect, but it's definitely closer to the truth than what we see in schools, in high school. Lieber, you're an idiot. The Gleason map couldn't be more inaccurate if it tried. Let's list just a few problems with the Gleason map. East and west doesn't mean east and west. The further you go south, the more inaccurate your distance measurements are going to be. And finally, one word, Australia, just fucking Australia. And then I searched for like the longest no scale flight in the world which started the first flight was on the 11th of october 2018 so last year from new york to singapore singapore airlines um distance 8285 miles or 15344 kilometers and this is how that um flight looks on the official website that gives you public information scientific information the flight instead of going into straight line from new york all across the ocean the atlantic uh south of europe or north of africa arabia and india uh, to singapore it goes all the way up north through canada greenland the north pole it goes outside of the map and then comes back down towards the north of russia siberia mongolia china and singapore finally an actual claim that can be addressed First, let's rehash the problems with the Mercator projection. As you go further away from the equator in either direction, the lines of longitude remain equidistant from each other, whereas in reality, the distance between lines of longitude shrink as they get further away from the equator until they all reach the same point. Now on this map, that point is the north and south poles, and they are 25,000 miles long. So when you look at the parabolic nature of the flight path, you have to keep in mind that the distance between the two points on the projection appear to be separated by a great distance. However, in reality, they are just on the other side of the North Pole. 
Allow me to demonstrate. The flight from New York to Singapore begins in New York and travels north through Canada, across the northernmost regions of our planet, down through Russia, and landing in Asia. Now, Lieber is right. If the surface of the Earth were a rectangular two-dimensional plane, then flying outside of the map would make no sense at all. It would just be easier to fly directly in a straight line from New York to Singapore. However, on a spherical globe, the shortest distance between any two points is known as a great circle. I briefly covered great circles in my last video, and I'll cover them a bit more in depth in here. Great circles are lines that run around a sphere whose linear plane also crosses through the center of the Earth. Examples of great circles are lines of longitude and the equator. Because great circles represent the shortest distance between two points on a sphere, shipping routes and airline flights both follow great circles when possible when navigating across the Earth's surface. So where does the great circle take us on a flight path from New York to Singapore? Well, let's pull out Google Earth Pro and show what path the great circle follows. Now, before we get started, I know what flat earthers are going to say. You can't presuppose that the Earth is a sphere to prove that the Earth is a sphere. So let's be clear. The following demonstrations are just going to check whether the, as Lieber put it, scientific data of the flight paths match what the globe Earth predicts. As I stated already, if the Earth were a flat rectangle, the obvious path to take would be across the ocean through Europe directly to Singapore. But as you can see on a globe, the Great Circle actually takes us close to the North Pole just as the flight path appears on the Mercator projection, conforming to the predictions made by the Globe Earth model of reality. Going to the most dangerous places on Earth, well, it's super cold and it's super problematic to in, in, in case something happens, the plane is, a, is done for, according to official science. Now hold your horses there, Lieber. Planes and ships have been known to test the harshest of conditions to ensure efficiency. Sometimes this means flying over uninhabitable or hard to reach terrain like Northern Greenland. However, a plane could crash at an EMT conference and the most likely outcome is that all of the passengers on board will die. Not because of the train below them, but because of the massive forces associated with slamming into the ground from a high altitude. Lieber, you're an idiot. And then if you see this, this trajectory, this flight path on the official maps of the world has no sense. It's an insult to human intelligence. If no, Liebertard. You and all other science-denying flat earthers are the insult to human intelligence. I'm still confused as to how a flat earther can talk about human intelligence to begin with. Not only do they lack the intelligence of a brain-dead dung beetle, but they would prefer the rest of us to be just as dumb as them. But I refuse to reduce my ability to critically think just so a flat earth idiot feels better about his stupidity. If you see this on the equidistant map, which is not perfect, but it's definitely closer to reality. If you go from New York, you, in you indeed go to the north of Canada, north of Greenland and the North Pole, north of Russia, and down to China, Mongolia and Singapore again. Close to reality, my ass. Let me say it one more time. Australia. Just. Fucking. Australia. And also, why is it ridiculous to think that the flight path going over Greenland makes sense when you literally show the flight path going over Greenland on a flat earth map and say it makes perfect sense? The cognitive dissonance is strong with this idiot. Hopefully this these pictures make sense. This flight from New York to Manila, Philippines, um, again through Greenland, instead of going all the way through Europe, which is a safe area. Lieber, you can't say that it makes sense to fly over the ocean instead of through the dangerous parts of Greenland, and then follow that by showing us how it makes total sense to fly over these same dangerous areas just to support the flat earth. That's a special pleading fallacy. And every time you use it, I'm calling you a fucking idiot. And across the Atlantic Ocean, which is very cool, and everybody knows the Atlantic Ocean, you go through the whole of Greenland to the north of the Svalbard Islands, which are up in the very north where it's so dangerous and so cold, and down to Siberia, the dangerous place. Again, if you look at the, at the standard map, which is official, indeed, you do that flight path, you go through the North Pole and through Siberia which means that the Earth is not as they've been to telling us, it's not a globe. If only flat earthers would accurately represent the model that they're trying to prove wrong. Your rectangular Mercator projection map is not an accurate depiction of reality. But let's check these flight paths for ourselves again, just to make sure. 
If we plug in the cities of New York and Manila, we will see that the Great Circle once again takes us on a path near the North Pole, then back down through Russia and Asia, perfectly explainable on a globe Earth. Now there is one thing I would like to point out. The Great Circle is a geographical line and does not take things like the rotation of the Earth into account. So this flight path has the Great Circle passing the North Pole on the west side. The Coriolis effect, however, will cause the plane to drift eastward as it approaches the North Pole, so that it becomes more efficient for the pilots to take that path rather than the actual Great Circle. I would love to hear what this idiot thinks the reason is for taking the longer and more dangerous route over the harsh terrain of the North. Just more evidence that Flat Earthers have no problem holding double standards when it comes to their supporting evidence. And also, uh, these this flight that goes to and uh, goes from uh, Los Angeles to Singapore, like you would usually go in straight line to the Pacific Ocean and not go all the way uh, in the south of Alaska and the south of Russia and Japan. So it would just it would it would just be a line. Even if the the Earth was a globe, it would just be a line across water. You don't have to go all all across the the continents. Lieber, you're an idiot as you obviously don't understand the geometry of a sphere. Of course, on a flat projection, it would appear that a straight line would connect these two points efficiently across the Pacific, but in reality, this is not the case. The great circle connecting these two points actually hugs the coastline of Alaska, Russia, and Japan on its way from LA to Singapore. This particular flight path was one of controversy for flat earthers as the famous pregnancy flight that was diverted on its way to the western United States from Asia. Now at first glance, it looks like it doesn't make much sense, but that's on a globe earth that's projected onto a two-dimensional surface. But as you can see, when you map out the path over an actual sphere, it makes perfect sense. Uh, but the problem is with these flights, with the flights running from Moscow to LA, why in, in the tarnation, um, why would you do that? Why would you go to the north of Greenland? That's a very dangerous area, north of Scandinavia, north of Greenland, north of Canada, all those problematic areas when it's so easy to go through Europe and the Atlantic Ocean. If you take the map, uh, the Gleason map, obviously if you go from Moscow to New York, that's what you do, you go between the North Pole and Greenland. Okay, well, I said I'd do it. Every time he makes that dumbass claim that it's too dangerous on a globe Earth to travel in the extreme north, but it's okay and makes total sense when it's a flat Earth, I'm calling you a fucking idiot. As far as does this make sense on a globe, well, let's plot the course and check it out again. Plug in LA to Moscow into Google Earth and voila! A great circle that follows very closely to the actual path that the airplane takes. Just another piece of validating evidence that supports the globe Earth reality. Uh, if you go from Frankfurt to Vancouver, again, Greenland and Canada, if you look at the map, if Frankfurt to Vancouver is a straight line through Greenland and to the north of Canada. Again, Vancouver to Frankfurt matches perfectly to what the globe Earth reality predicts. The Great Circle follows a path that goes near the North Pole over Greenland and right into the heart of Europe, consistent with reality once again. If you go from Paris to LA, Los Angeles, again in Greenland, if you check the map, it is indeed a straight flight through Greenland in a straight line because a straight line makes more sense than going through the Atlantic Ocean, which would be a curve, which would mean more fuel and more flight time. And why is it okay that they don't take a longer path on a flat Earth, but not on a globe Earth? You have literally spent this entire video saying they should take the longer route because of the dangers near the poles, except when speaking about your own fairy tale model. You're an idiot. Oh, and the flight pass match up again. So now Libra is about to start addressing some of the flights in the southern hemisphere, which is not going to go well for him. So let's continue. Um, this one flight from Chile, South America to Melbourne, Australia, and instead of going all the way straight line to the Pacific Ocean, uh, through, the, through New Zealand or the north of New Zealand, straight line, very easy and very sweet, you do all this, uh, you know, circumference, like all this, this <sighs> closing to the Antarctic continent, which is not the Atlantic continent, it's the ice wall, and the, the, the dots you see on the map, that means that the flight is out of communication coverage. So you see there, once it leaves the South American continent, once it leaves the radar of the flight control area, 
it it doesn't get any more communications until it reaches Tasmania or close to land, which means that the communications come from land from antennas, which means that there's no satellites, such as the confirmation from air pilots from Argentina and Chile when they had interviews. So before checking and comparing the predicted flight path, let's address a few of his incorrect arguments. First, planes don't communicate with their satellite-based GPS. They simply receive data from the satellites in space to help them navigate the surface of the Earth, but they communicate their position via ground-based communications. If a plane is flying at 30,000 feet in the air and it can't communicate with any ground-based radars, then that means something big is in the way, like the surface of the Earth. But let's check the flight path anyways. Plotting a course from Melbourne, Australia to Santiago, Chile, you will see that the Great Circle takes the airplane close, but not all the way to Antarctica. Again, the actual flight path the planes take is consistent with our globe reality predictions. Now, I believe it's a good time to point out Lieber's intellectual dishonesty here. In every other example he gave us, he showed what the actual flight path was against the predicted flight path based on the AE map. Care to wonder why he didn't show it this time? Lieber, you're a fucking idiot. Um. In this case, why the heck would you go from Tokyo to Moscow up Siberia when in a straight line? It's much easier to China, Mongolia, Kazakhstan and the north of uh, the south of Russia. No, you go to Siberia because it's the best place to fly, of course. Why would we go to Siberia, you might ask? Well, if you look at the screen, you will notice that the great circle from Moscow to Tokyo goes through Siberia. Just another confirmation of our globe Earth reality. This is just too easy, guys. If you go from Madrid to uh, Vancouver or Canada, or, yeah, no, sorry, to from Madrid to LA, to LA in, uh, on the west coast. Again, you go to the south of Greenland. If you check the map, you see that it's always Greenland, Greenland between the flights of uh, Europe and America. So there is a huge continent there, which is like Scandinavia, pretty much. It's a big portion of the United States or Canada a big portion of Europe, to be honest. All, the whole of Spain, France, Germany and Italy would go in, Scand in, in Greenland. At least he stopped claiming that it was just too dangerous to make that trip on a globe Earth, but okay on a flat Earth. But let's check the flight path. As you can see, the flight path follows almost precisely to the predicted great circle across the surface of the spherical Earth. If you check this flight from Dubai to LA, again, Dubai and LA is the same as New York to Singapore. Instead of going in a straight line, you go to the north of Russia, you go to the North Pole, and you come back to the north of Canada. And um, if you check the map, it is indeed the same flight. If you, take, if you check the flat earth map, it makes a huge sense. If you check the other globe map and the Mercator maps, it doesn't make any sense. This is actually a good example to test our predictions out, as the path from LA to Dubai seems to go completely out of the way on the Mercator projection. But as you can see, regardless of how ridiculous it may sound or look, the shortest path or great circle from LA to Dubai is not over either ocean but almost directly over the North Pole. I do realize that it is going to be hard for Flat Earthers to accept that this is our reality, especially since Flat Earthers are non-intelligent life forms, more commonly referred to in the scientific community as idiots. Yeah, this flight from Moscow to New York, again, why the heck would you go to the north of Iceland? Like Iceland is not even, it doesn't make any sense. Iceland is way up north, is near Greenland. You want to go to New York, you don't want to go to Greenland. If you check the, the flat earth map, you will see that from Moscow through in a straight line to New York, it is indeed the fastest way to go it is between Greenland and Iceland through the north of Iceland and the south of Greenland. Another great example of how the actual flight paths follow the most efficient routes when flying from point to point on a sphere. The results are not going to change because the Earth is not flat. It's a globe and the evidence supports that. Anyone who still thinks the Earth is flat is running around life with their fingers in their ears screaming la 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 la. Flat Earthers are fucking idiots. This flight. Uh, again from Helsinki to Canada, always to Greenland. This idiot showed Helsinki to LA instead of Canada, but the outcome still isn't in his favor. Hey Lieber, the Earth's a globe, you moron. The flight from the coast of United States, New York to Korea, South Korea, always to Greenland, always to the North Pole, 
to the Arctic Ocean and to Russia, Siberia. Just save your breath and say the following. Always along the great circle that connects the two points. That makes more sense and makes you sound less stupid. Well, I think that's where we're going to end it today. It's quite obvious that the only way for a flat earther to disprove the globe Earth is to just not consider that it's a globe at all, claim that a flat projection map is accurate to our reality, and show the discrepancies on your fake globe flat Earth map. Flat earthers aren't going to win any arguments taking the dishonest approach. But as we all know, all flat earthers, especially Liebertard, are fucking idiots. Now I'd like to take the time out to thank Lieber, a relatively new flat earther to YouTube, deciding that enough was enough. If he's going to be stupid, he's going to do it with pride online for the world to see. Because Lieber, you are a fucking idiot. Alright, so you made it to the end of another episode. And oh man, I thought there were some dense flat earthers out there. But whoa. It seems like lately they are starting to multiply at an exponential rate. Now normally I would complain, but who would keep us entertained if they were all gone, right? Anyways, I just wanted to say thanks to all of you who made it through another entire episode of complete stupidity, and know that I have a whole lot more planned for you in the near future. Thank you once again to all of my patrons and channel members whose support helps me to continue to grow this channel. Be sure to subscribe to our second channel, Science or Satire, where Fight the Flat Earth and I are attacking stupidity daily. I'm Father Skeptic, and I'm out. <laughs>